Hello and welcome to CRTV 131 Contemporary American Cinema. I am Professor Dave Eccles and I will be guiding you through this wonderful and very interesting course. I think you're going to really like it. At least I hope so. Uh, and you are listening to me right now and seeing me right now through Canvas. And at least you found this. Yes, you found, you found me here in Canvas. You're probably not new to Canvas. Um, but this class might be different than some of the others. It is completely, not quite completely, mostly self-paced. So there are no Zoom classes, no Zoom classes. So you'll be watching these class videos of my PowerPoint slide lectures uh, at your own pace, uh, but you will be taking quizzes and turning in assignments on certain due dates. So you do have due dates, but no Zoom. Maybe that's good. I don't know. So your syllabus, uh, right at the top of your, in Canvas area, I think it's like the third item down. It's very important. It is a legal document, a legally binding contract. And uh, you can communicate with me. It says right there in the syllabus. I have an email address. Uh, probably you will be using the Canvas inbox. That's probably the easiest way. And if you do that, then I'll know uh, what class and what college. I teach at multiple colleges and I teach multiple classes at multiple colleges, so I need some kind of a hint. So if you send me an email, then I need uh, 131 usually is enough. That I, I, need, uh, I need that. But if you're sending me um, via inbox, I will know. And the syllabus, like I said, it is a legally binding contract. It's on, on uh, file at the department division office, at the, I don't know, county level, state level, and that is our contract. Any questions or anything, it goes to the contract. And you have other contracts in your life. A lot of them you don't read, neither do I, the, the Facebook uh, contract or the email contracts and stuff like that. But maybe you have a rental agreement, maybe you have a car loan or something like that, and those are kind of important. Um, and so you want to keep those safe and handy and on file, and you want to be able, be able to refer to them. And if there's a question, then uh, that's what they do. They go right to the they go right to the contract for disputes. So hopefully we don't have any disputes. But anyway, it is important. And there is our course syllabus. It's right near the very top, uh, and so we want to open that up and look at it and study it. I know it's online, so you can't take a yellow highlighter to it, but it's important and you want to use that and uh, and save it. And you could even print it out, I guess. Um, and there's the rest of uh, what we have in Canvas. I've deleted some other stuff in there, but that's what we have. Mostly we're going to be in modules. That's where the this lecture is. You've obviously found modules because you found this and you're listening to me now and that's where all the rest of the classes are going to be and uh, the PowerPoint slide lectures and the accompanying film clips, hundreds and hundreds of film clips and also we have assignments and quizzes and grades and that's pretty much the class right there. And I guess that's this semester. I was going to say don't don't worry about this but I guess I, I did that for this semester. Self-paced. Okay, check in regularly. Now, I recommend this very, very highly. In notifications, you can put your email address in and have Canvas alert you if there is a late grading or a submission comment or an announcement, then they will send you an email. Okay, instead of going to the college, uh, the college website, website, web page, and then finding Canvas and sending into Canvas and then finding our class. That's three or four steps right there. They will send you automatically, Canvas will automatically send you uh, that, um, that uh, grade or submission or comment or something like that. And so I highly recommend this. Sometimes Canvas won't tell you until there's maybe a quiz tomorrow. Okay. Oh my God, it's already. And so uh, that's not a very much uh, lead time, and so you might, um, you know, have these notifications sent out to you. 
And uh, I would print out, I would recommend printing out the syllabus or putting it on your desktop, especially the part where there's the class schedule. It's the scrolls a little further down the class schedule. Um, but I highly recommend that. And yeah, let's take a look at it. There it is. Um, and the class schedule, um, pretty clear, right? This is not ours, January, but when there's assignment, when there's a quiz, if you print it out, you can take a yellow highlight or something like that. And um, otherwise, I would say if you put it on your desktop, that's another good place where you can refer to it without signing in uh, to the college and Canvas and all that kind of stuff. I can't tell you how many students turn stuff in late. And you can turn stuff in late. You just get penalized. You get penal points knocked off your score. So why lose points for just for being late? Because you didn't know, right? So keep up on all this stuff, and that's the best way to do it, I think. OK, so syllabus, there we are, all the information. Uh, preferences, and there is the inbox. Um, this could be your first semester in college, uh, and it could be um, maybe your first time in Canvas, so uh, if this is repetitious, sorry, but if, uh, if it's your first time, inbox, that's where you can communicate with me, and I will reply. I'm actually pretty fast on uh, replying. I don't take weekends off and, and stuff. I might not reply to that 11 p.m. question you have. I might, but um, you know, at some point I just uh, chill, watch TV, and uh, say I'll get back to them in the morning. But uh, I'm pretty fast. I, I like I say, I, I don't take uh, I don't take weekends off or anything like that. I, I I pride myself in timely replies. And there's our uh, there's our syllabus class schedule. So print it out. There it is. I just said that. There it is in in writing. And uh, I think it's a great idea. So once you get into the class, the class proper, um, the PowerPoint slides, there will be PowerPoint slides, just like this is. And there are pictures, graphics, uh, on every slide. So um, I don't want to tire out your eyes. You won't have to just be looking at white letters over a dark blue background. Uh, I have some kind of a picture. Here's Stanley Kubrick. And this is from, I wonder what, probably 2001, yes. And um, that's the key. You don't have to name off all his movies. That's the key right there, a lot of genres, film noir, horror, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, that's what it'll, it will look like, right, This, this, uh, these PowerPoint slide lectures. And if you were uh, taking this class in the classroom in person, it would be very, very similar to what you're getting right now. You would walk in, you'd sign the attendance sheet, you'd sit down, I'd make a few uh, announcements, and then I would turn out the lights and put the PowerPoint slides up. And you'd hear my voice and look at these slides. So you, that's kind of exactly what you'd, uh, what you'd get. And um, let's get this thing up. There we go. And uh, I would put in DVDs. When we talk about Kubrick, I would put in probably 2001 and Clark Orange and so on, Dr. Str and Dr. Strange Love, I think we do three. Actually, we do a lot of Kubrick. <laughs> oh, we look at Clockwork Orange, a little bit of The Shining, Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, yeah, I think with uh, Kubrick, we, 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 we handle him in, uh, in a lot of depth. But anyway, I would bring in a big armful of DVDs and put them on. And these are all very famous movies. And the corresponding clips for most of these films are also on YouTube. And I have found... Um, like I say, correspond, not exactly what I show in the classroom, but I found some pretty good clips, I think, uh, for all of the movies, hundreds, I think, in this class. We're going to look at uh, or talk about at least 150 movies, I think I totaled it up at one point, lots and lots of movies in this class, very comprehensive. We're not going to watch any, uh, I don't watch any full movies in the classroom, so you don't have to worry, we're, we're not missing out on that. Um, to me, it just kind of brings the whole class to a halt uh, for a couple hours. And if you're not into it, then uh, you're probably sending messages or taking a nap or leaving early or whatever. So 
all the movies that we watch from start to finish, you'll do that at home on your own. And we will be looking at clips, lots and lots of clips. So um, in case I accidentally say week one, that's the same as class one. Okay, we don't have weeks in this class, right? We are self-paced. And uh, so you can um, take a break whenever you want. Okay, uh, I don't recommend doing it, doing it all uh, the day before the, the quiz, but uh, if I accidentally say week, I mean class. If I accidentally say paper, Canvas calls them assignments. Canvas calls tests, quizzes, same, 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 same. So if I accidentally call something a test or a paper, then it's all the same. Don't worry about that. Modules, that's where all the action is, as you are seeing right now. And they will be opened and unlocked, basically, unlocked in batches. Uh, so the first quiz relates to classes one through four. So those will be the first class. I guess classes and modules are also the same, too. I guess I should have put that in there, too, classes and modules. Class one through class four will be opened for about, I don't know, four weeks or so before the first quiz and all together in a bunch. And then after the quiz, the next day, the next batch will be unlocked. So yes, we are self-paced, except for quiz days and assignment due dates. Okay, then you got to catch up with the rest of the class. So check in regularly. Uh, I don't recommend putting this off. Class is normally once a week. So why not? go through a class once a week, right? Set your time, that would be Wednesday at three o'clock and find the class and find the modules and all that. And it'll take you almost the same as if we were in the classroom, okay? And I timed it out. The, the, this is the same exact lecture I'd be giving in the classroom. Uh, we'd take a break in the middle of the class. Uh, you get to take your own breaks, food breaks, potty breaks, rest breaks, stretch breaks, all that kind of stuff. So it'll probably take you two and a half to three hours uh, and you're going to want to be taking notes and everything. So I wouldn't do all this, you know, the day before the test. Um, I would try to stay on top of it. There are the classes. So I guess module, class, right, same thing. And there they are. And once we click on the little twirly there, it will open up. And whole bunches of whatever I talked about. In the PowerPoint slide lecture, and apparently class five, we talk about MASH, and we talk about The Godfather, and we talk about Chinatown. So if you want to do it the way you'd be getting it in the classroom, then you can listen to the part of my slide lecture on MASH, and then watch the MASH stuff, and the Robert Altman stuff, and then go back to the PowerPoint slide lecture, and then go back to The Godfather. You could do it like that. That's the way it would be in the classroom, or you can listen to the whole hour. They're about an hour, uh, uh, somewhere 55 to maybe an hour and 10 minutes or so for the lectures. And then 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes. And yeah, it's close to two and a half hours, three hours. They are recorded and uplinked I on, on my my iMac here, my nice big desktop iMac. I uh, record them and um, I record them and then I upload them to my YouTube channel, I guess it is. And then I take the URL from YouTube and I put it into Canvas and Canvas automatically links to it. It's very nice. Canva I like Canvas. I, I, I've had to use Blackboard at another college, and I don't much care for it. I think Canvas is really good. I really like it. It's very easy for me to maneuver, and I hope it is for you too. But if a module link or a class link isn't working, go to YouTube. That's where it is. And find it yourself. Eccles, CRTV, 131, Class 7. They'll take you right there. That's all you need, Class 7 or Class 4 or whatever it is. And then you can find some of your own clips and stuff. Okay, if it's if it's every once in a while, this doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while, uh, a URL 
or one of my uh, lectures goes down for some reason. They change it. I don't know why they change it, but they change it. So I do that, right? I find it, find the new URL, and copy and paste it back into Canvas, and then it's all fixed and all better and all nice. Uh, but until I fix it, you don't have to wait for me. You don't have to wait for me. Just send me an email and tell me, all right, that it's not it's not working. Um, but uh, it should uh, it should get you right there. It should get you right there, nice and easy. There it is. That's what I just said. Yeah. So they uh, film clips go down. I find a replacement. Let me know, and then you can go down the rabbit hole and find some cool clips from The Godfather or Bride of Frankenstein or whatever you want to watch. And there is my YouTube. Um, I guess that's my library. Okay, film history, CRTV. I don't know. Let's see, there it is. Okay, you'll see all my videos and playlists and all that kind of stuff. So you can find that anytime. Grading. There are three timed multiple choice quizzes, 40 minutes for 50 questions. Okay, right off the bat, I can hear you saying that's not even a minute per question. No, no, it doesn't need to be a minute per question. You're reading a sentence. How long does it take you to read a sentence? And then you're clicking A, B, C, or D. So it doesn't take very long. And when I look at students' tests, quizzes in Canvas, the students that get an A, uh, they finish the quiz in like 10 minutes, 11, 12, 13 minutes. You know, the, the higher the grade, A's and B's, they don't need nearly 40 minutes. So study, study hard, study for hours, study hard, and you won't need all that time. Uh, now, I know there are some things that I know, and I didn't study for it, and it's in the back of my mind, all right? Uh, you know, who's the director of, um, you know, Boogie Nights? Uh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. I know it. And maybe when I'm driving my car or when I'm out for a walk, it'll come to me, right? Because I didn't study for it. But I'm not going to give you 10 hours to take the quiz until the answer comes to you and pops into your head. You know the answer, but you need to know the answer in 40 minutes, okay? That's the way tests work. There's a time limit. Even if you don't cheat and look it up, right? Especially if you don't cheat. You're not allowed to have books and stuff in the class, but it, just sitting there and staring at the ceiling and and thinking, you need to get it done in the 40 minutes or so. Okay, so there, there's no notes, closed, no notes, no books, no videos, no nothing during the test. It's a, like a regular uh, classroom test. What would you do before you took a test in a classroom? Well, you'd empty your bladder, probably, and um, drink some water, whatever you need to do. And then you sit down in the classroom and you don't get to leave until you're done with the test. Okay, maybe you've got a friend or a book or a phone out in the hallway. So you don't get to leave. You know that. You don't get to leave during tests, and that's the way it is here. Okay, so tell your, tell your friends, tell your family. It's very important. You're trying to take a test. Shush, shush, shush. Um, and you need to have a good uh, Internet connection. So if, you're, if your Wi-Fi at home is kind of spotty, maybe think about going to campus and taking it in the library um, or taking your laptop and uh, you can sit in your car. I think there's Wi-Fi throughout campus in the parking lot or whatever or sit on a bench or take your laptop to the to the library or something like that. But you need to have a good or go to Starbucks. I don't know. You need to have a good internet connection. I can't, you know, just give it to you again. Um, you've seen all the questions. You can't take it the next day, I'm sorry to say. So you need to, uh, you need to have a good internet connection. And, uh, and school offers that, right? So it's right there. Also, we have four assignments. You will watch a film from a list of films, not just any film, but a film from a list of films. And there's, I have a rubric there, and you're going to address, I think, nine or ten rubric prompts. I'll show you that in just a bit. And that's 80 points. So there's 380 points. That's it. Three tests, four papers, 380 points. And you can do up to three more optional. You don't have to. Optional extra credit assignments. Five points each. Now, the extra credit is due. The due date says December. 
but you don't have to wait for, you know, if this is a spring class, I guess I, I could, you know, it would say it's due, you know, sometime in the middle of May, okay? You don't have to wait till it's due because there's also a paper that's due that week and there's also a quiz that's due that week. So uh, turn in your extra credit as soon as you do it. Turn it in throughout the semester. If you're going to do extra credit, turn it in in, you know, September, October or whatever. But just because it says due on, and I can't remember what the due date is, but, you know, December 1st or something, don't, don't wait. Don't wait till the due date. Get it, get it, get it in. Save yourself the, the aggravation. Okay, the other stuff has actual due dates. This one, the, the due date is for all the extra credit is way at the end of the semester. But you got the whole semester to turn it in. So this class, and I get a lot of questions, it's, it's based on points, not percentage. Okay, it's points, not percentage. So here in Canvas, and I wish they didn't do this. I wish I could get rid of this. They put this in. Do not look at this column. Don't look. That's not your grade. Okay, that's not your grade. It, 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 for some reason, it factors in extra credit and some other stuff, and it's not correct. This column, right after your name, that's the points. If you want an A, you need 300 and, uh, I think it's 340 points. 340 points for an A. Okay, you want 340. There's an A. There's an A. Okay, there's an A. That's what you want. Probably an A, two points away. Okay, that's your grade, not this. Please do not look at this and tell me, Professor, I have 69%. What do I have to do to get a C? That's, that's, that's not it. To get a C, you need 260 points. That's how you get a C, not 70%. Okay, I'm stressing that. Now, I know the grades aren't going to happen until the end, until way until the end of the semester, but I can't make it any clearer than that. So while you're taking notes, while you're watching clips, and we'll be watching clips, I would recommend just a simple identifier. Double indemnity. Film noir, insurance agent, wife, plot to kill her husband for insurance money, Billy Wilder. Good. That's, that's enough. You don't have to write down a whole lot about the film clip. But I think an identifier is good. The double identity, it doesn't really tell you much, right? Or clockwork orange, what the heck's that? I mean, that's a British uh, saying, okay? I think it's crazy as a clockwork orange, right? Um, so give yourself a little identifier and you should be okay for notes. Not lots on dates. You don't have to remember lots of dates. There's maybe five dates in the whole class. It's not real date heavy. There's some that are important, and in the lecture, you have to listen to the lecture. In the lecture, you'll hear, you'll hear me say the same date maybe two or three times, and then you'll know it's important. If I don't even mention the date, then it's probably not important. But if you hear me mention the date, that means you have to listen, then you, know, then you have to study. Okay, production code, 1934. Probably should know that. Uh, so primarily on PowerPoint slides, but a little bit on the film clips. So make sure you watch all the film clips too, right? And maybe a sentence or so on that. Uh, so there we are. I just I more or less said, um, you know, if, if you know the material, then it will seem like what's two plus two? What state do you live in? Okay, who's the governor, right? Who's the president? It'll seem real easy. And students that get 90 something percent, it seems easy to them. They studied hard and they zip through the quiz. Um, and if not, then 40 minutes won't be enough. Three hours won't be enough. If you don't know it, then you don't know it. Okay, three hours won't be enough. Now, importantly, I have a lot of students because it's so self-paced, they wait to the very last minute to take the quiz. Well, it starts at midnight. If, if it says Tuesday, then then actually Monday night, right? Monday when it changes from Monday to Tuesday. And then it goes all the way till 11.59 p.m. Now, if you're still taking the test at 11.59 p.m., it'll lock, lock you out, log you off and lock you out, okay? It doesn't care that you started before 11.59 p.m. At 11.59 p.m., it locks you out. So... You got to start the quiz at least, I would say, by 
you can't pause it, otherwise it wouldn't be a timed quiz. You can't pause it and say, I need to take a bathroom break. You can't do any of that or respond to this email. You gotta do it like you're in the classroom. Okay, so every semester I get one student. Professor, I got logged out. Well, you had a chance to look at the entire quiz. I can't open it up again for you. You could have studied all night. And now I open it up for you the next day. So no, I'm not gonna open it up because you got locked out at 11.59, sorry. 24 hours. So you can take this outside there. You can take this class anywhere on the planet that has internet. Okay, I have students in China, I have students in Africa, I have students all over the place. Okay, but you gotta have internet. So if you're up in the Sierras, then you won't be able to turn your stuff in and take the quiz. You need to have internet. Otherwise, it's pretty open. You can be pretty much anywhere. So um, you just make sure you have internet connection on at least those three days, the three quiz days. And you can, you can, turn, the, you can turn the assignments in early. Right? You can turn the assignments in early. So even though the assignments are due on the 15th, you can turn it on the, on the 13th or the 12th. Okay? But for at least three days, you need to have 40 minutes in that 24-hour period to be on the internet. You, like I say, you go to, you can go to uh, Thailand, take the quiz over there. That's fine, as long as you... And I, I, you know, it's kind of funny that I have to mention this, because I have had students in China and Africa and places and there's a time zone difference. So if you are in China or Africa or somewhere or Europe or Connecticut, uh, we're on California time, okay, Pacific time. For a while, I guess we have uh, 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 daylight saving time, and then we'll go to standard, but you need to do it on uh, uh, California time. Now, I can't just give you more time. Hey, professor, can I have another 10 minutes to do it? No, I can't. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. All the students are the same and equal and all of that, but the college can. So you need to go to DSS right there and go to this. There they are and contact them. There's an email and a phone number and you can describe that you, you are nervous or you have a, a disability of some sort, they're very open, they're very nice, they're very welcoming, and they will email me, have them email me, and I will, through Canvas, I can do individually, I will, in Canvas, give you time and a half, which means 20 minutes, half of 40 is 20, so then you'd get an hour to take the quiz, and sometimes they uh, say to give the student double time, which would be 80 minutes to take the quiz. Otherwise, um, it's I've been teaching for way too long, as, lo as long as you've been alive. <laughs> it's true. I started teaching in the 90s. Uh, and I know how long it takes to take a test. If you study for it and you know it, then that's, that's how that it works. But these are nice people here at DSS. So late penalties, uh, assignment is 20 points if you get it in on time, and you actually get two tries. So I will, I will give you a, uh, a notification. Let me see here, maybe I should, no, that's okay, I'll, I'll go in order here. Uh, anyway, uh, five points for the first day and two points every day after that. Okay, and then at five, five points, it's not, you might as well just do extra credit. You're not, you're not getting anything for your assignment. Why turn it in for two points? Quizzes, 100 points. First day is five points, then three points every day after that. You're 20 points down at a week. Okay, if you, turn your, if you turn it in seven days late, then you're 20 points down. So don't do that. Okay, don't lose points for not really a good reason. Okay. And I can't give you tests. I'm not going to give tests early either. If you know you're going to be out of town or something like that, just make sure on those three days that you have uh, internet. 
Otherwise, you're going to have to take the late hit because I don't do tests early for a variety of reasons. Okay, and you need to tell me, please reopen the quiz. I'm not going to remind you, you, you missed a quiz. Here, take it, right? That's your responsibility. You have to send me an email through uh, inbox or actual email. You don't have to tell me why. I don't need, I don't need a reason or an excuse. I don't care if you forgot or if you're working or whatever. Um, just tell me, please reopen quiz number two. I need to take it. And I will, and then I will deduct the appropriate amount of points from your score. So for the film analysis assignments, and it's pretty clear in the assignment, 12 point, I think Canvas just converts everything to 12 point font and I don't know if it's Helvetic or whatever it is, but they tend to do all that. But basically, you're going to write your paper on your document, right? You're going to write it in your document, and it should look like this, okay? Single space, single space, single space, bold, okay, and so on, right? And then it'll go on for a page and a third or so. One sentence description. Tropes are going to be numbered, flush left. You can go online, look up tropes through the movies, I, it's in the assignment, how to do all that, all right? So it should look like this, and then you're gonna, you're gonna drop it. Uh, actually, here's the assignment. This is the way it looked when I wrote it in my Word document. Very descriptive. Now you don't put this, you don't have to, you just put on your paper inciting event, okay? Inciting event, you don't, you don't have to put what is the inciting event in the film? What sets the story in motion? You don't write that down. I don't need that. Just incite an event and then you're done. Okay. Tropes, tvtropes.com. And there's others. Five or more, but no less than five. And where they are, not just the name of the trope, bad boy, but a little just short description. Okay. And you should be fine. Uh, you can have a little bit of fun, right? I like creativity. Uh, one sentence description. One sentence description of The Wizard of Oz. Transplanted to a surreal landscape, a young girl kills the first person she meets and then teams up with three strangers to kill again. Yeah, sure, that's, yeah, that's one sentence. One sentence only has one period, okay? So it's not two or three sentences. I don't need to know Judy Garland. I don't need to know Dorothy. I don't need any of that stuff, right? You don't need to know who's starring or directing or any of that kind of stuff. This is what they call the log line, and I just need, this is, Probably what you get in Netflix and all those other things. Just a short little, short little bit. I love this. I, I guess it's real. I don't know. Somebody cut it out. And, okay. Anyway, kind of fun. You'll type it up like that, and then you will copy the whole thing. Right. Start up here and drag the whole thing. Copy, and then you will paste it right there into Canvas. And they will make their own stuff. <laughs> it's not exactly the way you you did it, but that's okay. It's close enough. And then I will either give you 20 points or not, and a comment. I will always comment. I will always comment on the film, on your paper, uh, and the film in general, yeah, frankly. And if you didn't do it right, then I will give you a comment. This is way too short. That's why you want to have, I'm going to go way back here. That's why you want to have submission comments sent to your email. So you know that I made a submission and quite possibly that you had a problem, right? That you can easily fix. Way too short. Revise and resubmit for full credit. Oh, you only get two. You get two. The first one, usually it's fine. Students follow the directions, they do it fine, it looks just like that. They get the 20 points, I make a comment, and all that. But sometimes it's not, and I will tell you, so you need to be on top of that. You don't get the whole semester to fix your paper. Okay, I'll always comment. So in settings, you can change it to make sure you get that notification. It's a good idea. So here we go, extra credit. Um, and you can do more films. Um, you don't need to do all of the page and a 
think it's a page and a third, something like that. It comes after a page and a third. But I need a half a page. And so sometimes I get students, I don't know who they think they're, here's, here's my name and then triple space and then the director and triple space and the date and the name of the class and all that kind of stuff. And basically they haven't even started writing their paper until down here. Okay, and then they write three or four lines and they think that's a half a page. That's not a half a page. Half a page doesn't include this. This is part of the half a page. Okay, the identifiers. You need an actual half page. So, um, you can do more of those. And uh, like I say, you can use a couple of the prompts, inciting event or some of the tropes or something like that. Uh, I don't need a summary. I know the movie. I'd rather have your opinion or your thoughts or something rather than a summary. So no summary, but otherwise you can write about the movie. And again, if you're having trouble uh, coming up with something, then you can use the prompts of that. But you don't need to use all nine. I think there's nine. You don't need all those. But instead of just doing more film papers, you're already doing four, I have some experiences. There's the Hollywood experience and the drive-in theater experience. And you just write about that in the first person. My cousin and I, or my date and I, or my girlfriend or boyfriend and I uh, went to the drive-in, I went to Hollywood, and we looked around, and we took pictures, and had a great time. There's a lot of uh, great theaters there in Hollywood, historic landmarks. So here, let's take a look. Uh, this is actually right next door. It's the Hollywood and Highland here, right next door to the the uh, uh, theater. I can't remember. It was Kodak, and then they changed the name. What it, Dolby. It's the Dolby Theater now where they do the Oscars. Parking is under, under here somewhere, and you come up on an escalator somewhere, nice and safe. There's not a lot of street parking in Hollywood, so I wouldn't think too much about parking on the street in Hollywood, and your car is going to be plenty safe down there in the parking. And this isn't really what you need to see. And I think they're going to change this anyway. I think they're taking some of this stuff down. It's sort of referencing a silent movie called Intolerance by G.W. Griffith way, way, way back. But next door is the Chinese Theater. It used to be Grauman's Chinese Theater. Now it's the TCL Chinese Theater, if you believe. It's a historic landmark. It has a giant IMAX screen in there now. It, didn't, it was built in the 20s, so they didn't have IMAX back then. But Hollywood's kind of cool. There's the Walk of Fame. Okay, you can look at the Walk of Fame, and it looks like this. Okay, I guess that's granite. And um, Sharon Stone was a film star. They have a different thing for TV stars and uh, recording stars and radio, like DJs and stuff, people. And uh, But not sports or politicians or anything like that. And um, near, also in Hollywood, there's the Capitol Records building. So around there, they have um, recording stars, a lot of recording stars and so on are around there. And then in the courtyard, you can't tell from this angle, but there's a big courtyard here. It was roped off a little bit during the, during the pandemic. I don't know if it's open or not yet. But anyway, you'll be able to see these slabs of, of concrete. And the first one was probably fun, and then he decided he could use it as a um, as, as kind of a promotional thing, Sid, Sid Grauman. So that's Sid. So when you see from the 30s and 40s, I think the first one is 27 or 28. And it comes all the way up to the present, so you'll be able to see, I don't know, Harrison Ford, Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, um, Harry Potter kids, Star Wars people, stuff like that, all the way up to the present, Marilyn Monroe, all, all sorts of stuff. Um, some you won't recognize, like Humphrey Bogart. Maybe you don't recognize Humphrey Bogart, but he was a big, big star in the 30s and 40s and into the 50s. And that's kind of stardom. That's kind of the way stardom works. I mean, think of the think of the four holy Chrises. Think of the Chrises, Chris Evans and Pine and Hemsworth and Pratt. Oh, I got it. All the four holy Chris's and the name of the Chris and the Chris. Okay. Nobody's going to know who the Chris's are in 60 years. Nobody's going to know one Chris from another in 60 years. Just like maybe you don't know Humphrey Bogart from 60 years. But they are big stars. Every bit of he was big, big, one of the top stars. So some you won't know. And some you'll know because of this class. And uh, others you won't know unless you take uh, an earlier class. But anyway, 
it's fun, right? Put your hands in there and see if your hands are as big as Arnie's was or whatever. And sometimes they put heels and stuff in there or uh, Groucho, I think Groucho Marx put a cigar. I think he had a cigar. He was known for his cigar and stuff. Sometimes they'll put that kind of stuff in there. And uh, inside, it's gorgeous. You don't have to see a movie in there. It's an IMAX movie, so that makes it expensive. It's in Hollywood, and that makes it more expensive. And it's part of the National Historic Registry, and that probably makes it more expensive. So um, it might be $25 or $30 to see an IMAX movie at there, but it's pretty cool inside. But you can talk your way in between movies. Sometimes the, the ushers and stuff will let you in and look around and stuff. It's very cool. That palace. Across the street is another uh, Grauman uh, work, the Egyptian. And there's also a Mayan theater downtown, but the Egyptian, that's down uh, right across the street there in Hollywood, Gr uh, Grauman's Egyptian. This is more for uh, older films, uh, and they will get maybe the writer or the director or the producer or someone to talk about the movie. So usually it's a little bit educational in a fun way. Uh, and you can, I'm sure you can find that online. And uh, directly across the street from the Chinese theater is the El Capitan, currently owned by the Disney Company. They didn't build it in the 1920s. They weren't a very big company in the 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s. Disney didn't become the big Disney company until really the 80s and 90s and aughts when they started buying, uh, you know, Lucas and Pixar and all that stuff. But they, they weren't much. They weren't one of the big studios like MGM or Paramount or Fox um, or Warner Brothers until now. Now they're the biggest, but not until very, very recently. Anyway, um, they own it, and so they will show exclusively their movies. So you might see a Lucasfilm in there, a Star Wars movie, or a uh, Marvel movie, or a Disney movie, or a uh, Muppet movie, or a Pixar movie, right? They have a lot of choices to uh, highlight their uh, latest. And on weekends, sometimes they have uh, uh, stage shows, things like that, uh, costumes. So it's cool to see a movie at the, at the El Capitan as well. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so that's an experience. Um, and uh, yeah, so five points. Take your friends, cousins, parents, whatever, date. Or, speaking of dates, uh, the drive-in. And we have plenty here in Southern California. There's the five that I found. Uh, go out the 91 in one direction or another, and you can find a lot of these. They are a lot of fun. Pretend it's uh, 1959, and you're going to grease, or rub without a cause, or hairspray, or something like that. And um, you can... Um, First off, most of these have three screens. So the, the uh, snack bar is in the center, like the hub, and then the screens are sort of radiating out from around it. So you use the same restrooms and the same snack bar as the other two screens. You can bring your own food in if you want, but they have like uh, uh, burritos and tacos and stuff like that, not just popcorn and, and uh, candy and stuff. Um, you can... Uh, Bring your own stuff in. They don't care. I'm, I'm sure they care, but they won't stop you from bringing in a pizza or a Subway sandwich or something like that, a bag of chips. Um, and some people, as you see the screens right here, and they have backed in. Now, they're in the back row. This is the back row because they'd be blocking people. But uh, if you're in an SUV or especially a truck, I don't see any trucks. Um, truck, you can back in. There's actually a little riser. It goes up four or five inches so that your car is sort of tilted back a little bit so you can see the screen. And um, you can put padding and stuff in the back of your pickup truck in the bed, the pickup truck, and watch from back there. And you listen to the movie through your FM radio. Okay, so you listen to your FM radio. Some people bring beach chairs and sit outside. It's really a party. It's a real party. It's a lot of fun. So you can crank your radio up if you want to really blast it out, if you have a good sound system in your car. Um, you want to stretch out your legs, so maybe don't bring your VW Beetle or something like that. Find the biggest vehicle you can find and uh, tilt your chair back, your seat back, and have a good old time at the movies. And 
get some extra credit points. And there's uh, from the 1950s. This is probably Photoshop or something. But anyway, there's there's Charlton Heston as Moses, the Ten Commandments, 1956, I think it was, in Southern California. And everything. You see all these nice, cool 40s and 50s cars. Uh, and uh, so a ton of fun at the drive-in or in Hollywood. Two great ways to get extra credit and have fun at the same time. Okay, so the textbook, it's only recommended. It's not required. You can easily get through the class. I don't know which ones. One of these is a there. Maybe that's a textbook. Um, and uh, so don't worry about that. Make sure you get the, you got to do the PowerPoint, take notes on all that, all that. We should be just fine. Study though, study hard, study for hours, not minutes. And ace, you know, zip right on through, 10, 15 minutes to take that test. Now, since we're not in the classroom, it's a little harder for me. I don't take roll because we don't have Zoom. So I start looking. If you start missing assignments and quizzes and stuff, I will try to be proactive and drop you. Um, if it looks like you just are missing too much, you know, you haven't taken the quiz in a week, you're 20 points down, you missed a couple of assignments, you're probably going to struggle for the class. So I will probably drop you. Uh, but of course, there are actual drop dates where you get with refunds and without refunds and grades and all that other kind of stuff. So check that out. That's all online. Check that out. But I will try to be proactive. And if it looks like you're just not doing anything, then I will not guaranteed, right? If I don't drop you and you don't do anything, then you get an F. Sorry, you, you get an F. Um, but, but try to stay on top of that. I, very, very few people uh, that happens to. But if life gets the better of you and you have family or work or something like that, try to, or contact me and say, Professor, I, I need to drop you. Help you out and hopefully see you another semester. So I think we have a very fun class. There I am earlier this summer, so that's a pretty recent picture. It's not 20 years ago. I love this picture. I look so good. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I think it's a fun class. It's movies, right? You get college credit for watching movies. That's cool. And, um, and you're self-paced, so you can have your class in the morning or late at night or whenever you want to take the class, as long as you get your quizzes and assignments in, and everything's, everything's hunky-dory. So welcome to CRTV 131. I think you're going to enjoy it. Stay on top of it. Don't let it get away from you, and you should get a good grade. It's not a hard class. I expect to see lots of A's and B's. All right, take care. See you in class one.